Hi there. Thank you once again for joining me on the program, You're a Doctor on COVID. I'm Dr. Mahendra Karpan. I'm the Head of Medical Services and Cardiology at the Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation. We continue our conversations around the COVID-19 pandemic. And today I have with me in studio, Mr. Kit Nascimento, who is no stranger to us. He is a PR guru in Guyana. He has had decades of experience representing the people of Guyana inside and outside of Guyana. And we're very fortunate to have his insight, his personality, and all that he brings to the table to spend some time with us to have a chat about COVID-19 and the vaccines and other therapeutic interventions as it relates to the COVID-19 pandemic. Remember, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to send a WhatsApp message to 620-6275, or you may send an email to docandcovid at gmail.com. Mr. Nascimento and I are both about seven feet apart from each other. So for the remainder of our conversations today, we will take the mask off so that we could be clearer in our communication. Mr. Nascimento, welcome to the program. Thank you very much indeed, Doc. It's a pleasure to be here and to be able to join you once again. Thank you for coming. Uh, and let me again express my admiration to you for continuing to keep our country and our peoples so very well informed about this uh, dreaded disease that we have to deal with. Um, and I'd like to begin by saying this to all of our listeners. Our people are generally behaving disgracefully. We are not observing the COVID protocols. We are putting the country at continued risk. And it is shameful that the medical profession, such as Doc, are risking their lives every hour of every day in keeping people alive who have contracted this disease, largely because as a nation and as a people, we refuse to be disciplined enough to observe the simplest of protocols. And until we do, and unless we ultimately are dependent on the vaccines saving us, we need first to save ourselves. I thought it was important, Doc, to say that. Well, thank you very much for, for your kind words. And I must say that whatever I do here, I'm confident in the backing of a whole slew of healthcare professionals, their dedication, their professionalism and commitment to the people of Guyana. And on the program publicly, I would like to acknowledge their efforts. And these are not just doctors and nurses, but those people who clean the wards, the people who transport patients on a stretcher, the ambulance driver, the physiotherapist, the pharmacist who um, is responsible for getting medications to these patients, the counselors who have to deal with all of the traumatic stress disorders, all the psychological turmoil that goes on with families, patients, etc. So it's an entire team effort across the country to get us to where we are. We are doing reasonably well. We can do better. And there are certainly ways that it could have gone a lot worse. So we're very fortunate, really. But you fight every day, every day to keep persons alive, many of whom probably would never have been uh, under your care if the nation as a whole had observed the simplest of protocols. Wear masks, wash our hands, keep our distance. Yes, that is, that is the mantra uh, recommended across the world by all responsible um, health care bodies, all regulators, and it has worked in many places. Um, of course, societies renowned for their discipline um, citizenry, 
those are places that have been able to have a much better outcome in the long run for COVID-19 and, and their patients. And I think it's important, especially now, to remind people of this, because I believe there may be a feeling, oh, well, the vaccinations are beginning to arrive now, so we don't have to worry about it. And perhaps, Doc, you'd like to address that. Yeah, well, before, we are both lucky that we have both been vaccinated with our first dose. And so I am very pleased about that. It's the last time I believe we were talking, we, were, we did mention about vaccines and whether it was on camera or off camera, you were inquiring about yourself and your family, etc. So I'm very pleased that you did get your vaccine. Well, yes, Jem, my wife and I uh, had our vaccine yesterday. And uh, you see me sitting here, still very much alive. <laughs> and I have to say that uh, I have had no symptoms at all. Oh, that's very good. Um, I took uh, advice and took a couple of Panadol before I went to bed last night. I had the vaccine yesterday around midday. Okay. Um, and I feel fine. Um, my wife, Jem, uh, I, I'm not sure if I have a permission to say this publicly, but she did uh, actually vomit. Okay. Uh, after we had dinner, she was fine. And all of a sudden, she had uh, felt nauseous. After that, she was fine again and has been fine since. Oh, well, that's good to hear. Um, so we're, we're happy that both of you are doing well. Now, you asked the question about vaccine. Is it like the answer? It's one of the answers, um, but it's not the perfect magic bullet that we're looking for. There is no perfect magic bullet in the COVID-19 pandemic so far. There are measures that we take and prevention is one of those. Vaccination is one of those. Now, a person who is vaccinated, what we do know is that all the vaccines, regardless of which one you get, whether it's the Chinese vaccine, the Russian vaccine, the Americans, Pfizer, Moderna, the British, AstraZeneca, all of the vaccines have a 100% effectiveness in preventing severe illness, admissions to ICU, and death. And that's an amazing achievement for vaccines that seem to have been developed in a much shorter time span than the traditional vaccine approach. And that has been possible because of advances in technology. But what we think started just a year and a half ago didn't really start a year and a half ago. People have been working on newer vaccines, tech, vaccines and vaccine technology since the Ebola outbreak in 2012-2014. So the substrate for the production of a more technologically advanced vaccine has been there for more than five years. We have, been, we have encountered the coronavirus before in a different form. We have encountered it in SARS. So we know how it attacks the human body. Knowing that about coronavirus, when a new type of coronavirus came along, we just combined the knowledge from before with the new presentations and combined it with the technology that was there to create the vaccine. And so it's a remarkable feat, a remarkable achievement of science that we are able to be here. So the record of prevention of severe illness is great. What the vaccine falls short of is to prevent completely transmission from person to person. And that is the real reason why we need to continue to observe the recommended protocols of social distancing, hand washing, wearing of masks. Because you may be protected from getting severely ill, but the next person who may not be vaccinated can still catch coronavirus or COVID-19 from you and that person can become really sick. So it's your responsibility to those around you, those in your household, um, those who you work with, those who you encounter, 
That's the reason why you should still continue with all of these safe preventive measures. So if I understand that correctly, uh, I've received a vaccine. When I get the second one, that the process will be complete. I can still be a carrier. Of course. Is that correct? Yes. You can still, you may still become infected with COVID-19, but your symptoms will be mild and not severe enough to go to hospital. It may be something very similar to you having had the vaccine that, you know, you didn't really feel any illness, right. but you could actually be carrying the virus. And so that is why you still need to keep the mask on, keep washing the hands, keep socially distancing. So tell me this, when the country eventually gets what we've been called herd immunity, yeah. that is where about 80 or preferably even higher percentage right. of the population have all been vaccinated. What then becomes the situation? Well, so that's an interesting question. And I, I wish I knew the complete answer <laughs> to that. But I suspect that we are going to move to a world where the presentation of your vaccine card or your vaccine passport may become necessary for you to be involved in certain activities. There was an early attempt by some airlines to ensure that for you to get on the aircraft, there are two things. You have to have a negative COVID test and you have to have a vaccine passport. Mm -hmm. That may become, you know, standard part of living in the future where you can only enter the cinema if you have been vaccinated. You can only go to a party if you've been vaccinated. You can only go to church if you're vaccinated. And that, those are going to be controversial issues for us to discuss. But right, we, because, we, because it, it, it's not compulsory. It is not compulsory. But in a privately owned facility, there are certain... Um, you know, flexibility is built into ownership and persons may want to exercise those rights, um, especially, you know, when there are others who are potentially at risk through no fault of their own and owners become liable for persons who are um, injured within their property. For instance, if a restaurant owner decides if you don't have a vaccine, you can't, you can't come in. That's right. his right. That's his right. Yeah. Um, but a government, in fact, could choose to make it compulsory. Our government has not. Correct. I don't believe, I, 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 I'm struggling for an example of a country that has mandated by law that all citizens should be vaccinated. I'm certain there are countries that encourage in more forceful ways than others that citizens get their vaccines. And, um, but I'm not aware of those. I can give you an example, though, that in the Middle East, in Israel, there is a massive drive. They're, they're more, the most advanced um, country when it comes to population of citizens being vaccinated. And the effects are being seen immediately. The average age, well, they started out like everybody else, vaccinating the elderly persons above a certain age group. Right. And all of a sudden, between the first and the second dose, there is a sudden drop in the average age of ICU admissions because the elderly have been vaccinated. So they're no longer being admitted to ICU. And that is a remarkable thing to note because here it is that there is an immediate measurable scientifically effect of the vaccination program. So it's very, very interesting, very hopeful. And there are us. other examples beginning to manifest themselves that where the vaccination program has started seriously, yeah. the quantum of, 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 uh, of cases is coming down. Correct. Yeah. So I'm glad we had this conversation today. When we get back tomorrow, we shall continue this conversation. Remember, if you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to send a WhatsApp message to 
or you may send an email to docandcovid at gmail.com. Thank you once again for joining us today. Mm -hmm.